So, hello. A lot of you have been wanting me to do a bike check, just to go over what I run, how I run it, why I run it, how the bike's been recently, little bits of information such as angles and all the tech and geo of the bike. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Let's get stuck in. We should probably start with the cockpit of the bike, so how you contact it. So I'm actually running Nuke Proof Plastic Neutron pedals I think. I've actually got a set of extensions own branded ones which are really nice but I'm yet to put them on so I need to put those on soon. They look really good and they're actually lighter than those plastic ones so that's that's a bonus. I'm actually running a inspired tripod seat. These are really lightweight they're quite small and they look really nice and it allows me to basically save a bit of weight in an area where I don't really need the weight and I've cut down the post it's about an inch long, just enough for it to get clamped. It's really nice. The extension do supply a seat, which I've got at home, but I think the black matches the bike better. Grip wise, I'm running Nuke Proof Electron lock-on grips. I find they're really good. They don't move at all. You know, see if you want to ride in the rain, it's not an issue at all. They're quite cheap, and I like to change the grips quite often just to kind of switch up my riding. I've got Shimano Saint 2009 brakes on there. I love these brakes, I've had them years. I've actually got a box of spares which I kind of swap through and to try and keep these brakes going. I'll probably end up upgrading to some new Shimano brakes when these die, but they're still really good. I'm running red EBC brake pads in there with Shimano XT Ice Tech rotors. Again, they're really good. I'm running 203 on this bike. I've had to use uh, some brake adapters, which you'll see. It's only just a, a plus 20 post mount because the frame and fork both have posts. Spide have done this on their bikes and to be fair I think it's the best way to go. You get a lot more braking force transferred straight into the bike so you you get less flex when you brake and it's honestly I find it a lot stiffer. Apart from that a lot of the calipers are post anyway you don't get really you don't get a lot of them apart from old hope brakes that have IS mounts. I've got braided hoses on those again been running those for years with no issues. The frame actually has internal cable routing which they've somehow managed to put a sleeve in the frame so when you put the brake cable in you don't have to faff around with trying to get it out the other end it's really easy i'm running the extension high rise handlebars these are prototypes at the moment they're actually a few grams lighter than the inspired arcade ones but i think the geo is similar again if anyone wants to know any of this geo then let me know i think i'm going to be testing some carbon fiber bars soon so maybe i'll need to get a new dentist it's so windy! <laughs> right, I think it's stopped. The stem, I'm running a Trial Tech stem. It hasn't got the logo on it, well it has, but it's blacked out. It's actually the same stem I got given on my first arcade. Couldn't tell you what it is. I think it's a 35 degree angle by, let's say 70, I think. But anyway, it's been really good. It's forged, I always go with forged stems because they're much stronger. And yeah, I'm still running it. It's if it ain't broke, I won't, I won't replace it. Got a few carbon headset spacers, um, save a bit of weight. All my bolts are titanium. Uh, I've gone with a, like a tiny blue kind of theme around the bike. You see my spoke nipples are blue, they're alloy, and all the bolts are. And it, to be fair, combined it saves a lot of weight. It's probably about 500 grams, and that's a lot. That's surprisingly a lot of weight saved. So, moving down the bike. We have my wheels, I've had these years as well, they're Spank Ubar rims on Hope Pro 2 Evo hubs. I've kept with the Pro 2s because they haven't broken, they've been reliable, they're really loud and the Pro 4s aren't quite as loud even though they have more engagements and again if it ain't broke I'm not going to fix it, it's just been reliable for me so I've kept them going. You can service them and you can change the pulls, the springs, the bearings so you might as well do that, save yourself a lot of money. I've got Sapin strong spokes. I'm actually going to be rebuilding these wheels soon and I'm going to try some double butted spoke from Sapin to save a bit of weight, so I'll see how those are. The tyres, they're obviously the Danny Mac Continental Air Kings. They're really good, they, they wear so slowly. You get a lot of grip, they've got quite stiff sidewalls and yeah, they're really good. I'm running them tubeless as well. I used to have the uh, LEC style rim inserts that I made up. They were really good, but I took them out when I built this bike up to try and save a bit of weight because it's quite a light bike and it'll make a difference. So I've took those out. I've still got the sealant in them and I've been getting no punctures, touch wood, 
I recommend it to anyone. It will stop you getting just any normal punches over glass or anything. It reduces the rotational mass of the bike, so you accelerate quicker, and it's just, I think it's good. I think it's the future. I'm running a Wolf Tooth 16 tooth sprocket on the back. It's quite fancy, it's quite nice, it's aluminium. I haven't had any issues with it. It's a lot of them I find you crack, but this is really good. Moving forward, uh, the chain is a KMC 610Z or Z610, I think. It's a really good chain. I don't go for fat chains because you don't need it at all. If you look after your chain and you replace it regularly, there's no point. So that's really good. You can see the tension on there. If you have, that have watched my Instagram stories, I went through, I, several phases of fixing that and getting it to where I want it. This is the final kind of prototype. It works really well. I've got rid of that top jockey wheel and you get a lot more leverage on the chain this way with one wheel as opposed to two. And it works really well. So touch wood, it stays really well and that's good. It's quite out of the way this one. It's not bolted on at the bottom of the chain stay. It's halfway through it, so that's good. The cranks, they're extensions prototype cranks. They're CNC'd out of solid aluminium billets and then anodized black. They're very stiff, haven't had any flexing with them. They go through a BB30 bottom bracket. You need the slightly larger bottom bracket, especially on a carbon frame, I think, because it reduces the point loads and basically it just spreads the load around a larger diameter. That came with the frame and I think when the frame kits come out, they'll come with the BB as well and the headset. So, lastly, we're going to be talking about the frame. The frame and the forks, I'll just, I'll just say it, together they weigh two kilos. That is not a lot. My previous uh, arcade I had built up, admittedly I wasn't going mental on the weight, but that was about 12 kilos. So, and this bike, this complete bike weighs just over nine. So, you know, you're talking about three kilos difference there. The actual frame weight, I think you save about two kilos just on the frame and the forks extremely extremely light so far extremely stiff it's a very nice ride because it's very stiff which is what you want but it's not it's not jarring when you land it's all the impact doesn't go through you it goes through the bike so it's it's really quite nice to ride in that respect it's got a carbon steerer tube on the forks uh, they're beefed out a bit at, well, you know out the front where you meet the crown obviously it needs to be with carbon you have to design carbon differently than uh, metals because it's a different material, it's got different properties. So far so good. I've had a couple of knocks on the frame so far, chips and paint, but it's been fine. I mean it's going to happen. You can see I've lined the chain stays uh, top and bottom. This is just to stop the chain hitting it and it's just for me to be, you know, for it to be a bit quieter. This is, um, you know, also to stop the chain damaging the frame, but it's just a bit of uh, mastic tape Ali C recommended to me and it's been really good. I've also stuck a bit of that on my down tube just in the immediate area for rails in case I smash it on a rail. The geo of the bike off the top of my head, actually, I'm going to get out the tech specs because you guys all want to know this. The wheelbase is 970mm, the chainstay is 365, quite short, the bottom bracket is 15 plus 15, 74 degree head angle. So 0.5 slacker than the arcade, but it works really well. You can kind of get over that with a bit of stem and bar tweaking. As I said, the frame weight is 1350 grams, fork weight is 650 grams. So very light, very light fork. Fork lengths are 415 mil long. As I said, post mount 180, both front and rear. So you could run a 180 disc, bolt in the caliper straight to the frame and that will work for most people. That'll be even stiffer than running my set. And you've got internal wiring. This is the frame where you've got a 135 spacing and that will suit most people with current hubs like this. Uh, if you've got a bolt up, you know, with 10 mil bolts, um, this will go straight into there. So it is kind of a bolt through in the fact it's got no slide in or horizontal vertical dropout, but you kind of get, you know, the benefit of not having to convert your hub to a bolt through. I find it works really well and uh, yeah you can get this bike with a rear end option of 142 mil spacing a lot of mountain bikes are going that kind of way nowadays and it will also have a 12 mil bolt through axle so if you guys really want to get the you know the top end of this and it'll be really stiff then that's what you want to get lastly I'll talk about the bars they are 740 mil long I find it's quite a good compromise. You could extend them possibly with some bar ends or something, but I find it's quite a good medium, especially for street trials anyway. They're 31.8 normal oversized diameter clamp. 
they've got uh, 12 degrees of back sweep uh, and then the up sweep is 6 degrees uh, I don't know what the arcade ones are, the inspired ones but I think they're pretty similar but they're pretty good and the overall rise is about 105 mil as I said earlier these uh, the bars actually a few grams lighter than inspired at 360 grams one thing I forgot to mention is I've, I'm running their their integrated bash ring and chain ring I find this really good it's a bit heavier than the inspired one but like more material on there just means it's going to be stronger in it you know if it's in the right area but um, it's a bit thicker it it travels past the chain a bit more so you've got more clearance on like when you hit it on walls and stuff I've bashed it a few times not gonna lie but I do I do tend to hit things hard sometimes and it's been absolutely fine 22 tooth integrated ring and it will go on to any SRAM kind of um, like that SRAM mounting system they have on their cranks uh, or the inspired ones or these cranks here they come with that mount on there so you're not limited to running their bash you can run a normal chambering if you want you just have to look elsewhere you can run a 332 chain with this uh, I wouldn't recommend it because it's just a bigger chain but they do sell a version where it's thickened up to accommodate the chain uh, this version is the 118 and again it's absolutely fine uh, I think it all looks really nice it's color coordinated I went for the the kind of off-white color because it contrasts a bit more and I just like gloss it's quite nice the other the other bikes are matte black it looks really good as well if you want to be stealthy but this kind of stands out a bit more so for me it's where I want to be obviously as you know it's got the internal cable routing through the forks and my tire pressures I'm running 45 psi in the back and around 40 in the front you know obviously in the back I want a bit more because I'm on the rear wheel a lot on the edges of stuff and when I use them as kickers but other than that I can't think of anything else I've missed so any questions let me know yeah I think I'm filming a video over Christmas so keep a look out for that as well that'd be quite cool to watch over the holidays but anyway again follow me on Instagram on Facebook and keep riding your bikes it's really cold, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go home.